Oh, hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Apario Foundation webinar. My name is Ian Dolphin. I'm Executive Director of the Apario Foundation. Together with our partner organization in France, ASUP, we represent a network of around 180 higher educational institutions and commercial partners worldwide. We are dedicated to supporting collaboration to realize the creation and sustenance of software to support the academic mission. We have a of software projects being actively developed and maintained. Many of them are in production at hundreds or indeed thousands of institutions worldwide. You can see those at our website. Today, I would like to introduce Karuta. Karuta is a next generation system to support portfolio activity. It's a project with international collaboration at its core. It's being developed by a partnership of HSA Montreal, Grenoble, and Kyoto University with support from a commercial entity in the United States, Three Canoes. I'd like to mention before we begin that the webinar is being recorded for those folks who can't attend right now. Uh, I'd also like to ask you to post questions in the big blue button chat window. We'll save those questions and circle back around to them at the end of the presentation. Before I hand over to, to Janice and the Karuta team, I'd also like to record our thanks to Fred Dixon and the other folks at Big Blue Button for making this facility available to us. But with that, over to Janice Smith and Jacques Renault and Karuta. Thanks, Janice. Yes, hello. Uh, Ian, let me know if, if you can't hear me. This is a presentation, as, as Ian Dolphin has indicated, on the Karuta Open Source Portfolio. I'm Janice Smith from Three Canoes LLC, and joining me today is Jacques Reynaud from HEC Montréal. Uh, we'll, we will be discussing the following points. We're going to give you a brief introduction to portfolios in case you're new to it, uh, discuss some highlights of the open source project for Karuta open source portfolio, and give you a, a brief overview of Karuta 1.0. We'll discuss migration from Sakai OSP to Karuta very briefly in case some of you are using OSP and would like to consider migrating. And we'll talk about features in development that will be released sometime in the coming year. Portfolios exist to enhance learning. There are three types of portfolios. One, one type focuses specifically on learning, and the other two on assessment and showcasing. Learning portfolios focus on an individual's identity, either academically or professionally or both. Assessment portfolios add to a focus on individuals by um, providing a way for programs and institutions to improve their performance based on student student um, mastery of, of learning outcomes. Showcase portfolios focus on sharing the evidence uh, developed with others. So a brief overview of learning portfolios. They help guide individual and group learning. They allow students to document, to reflect on their learning, and do this over time. They usually have a structured workflow and they usually include some kind of self-evaluation and some sort of feedback from instructors and peers. Assessment portfolios build on learning portfolios by collecting multimedia evidence of learning and linking that evidence to learning outcomes. Usually rubrics are involved to evaluate the evidence supplied, and often the evidence is aggregated and analyzed in reports that identify representative artifacts and the faculty evaluation of them. Showcase portfolios allow the individual to use the portfolio content to create a presentation about themselves. This can be a way to manage one's virtual identity in the world and to express oneself create creatively. Showcase portfolios could be shared with peers, with faculty and mentors, uh, for admission into graduate programs to obtain a few, to obtain future employment or to work as a member of a professional organization. All of these portfolios require a certain development of skills on the part of the individual portfolio owner. 
There is skill in collecting evidence, knowing what kind of evidence is appropriate and useful for others to view. Self-regulation in, lear- in relation to the learning that one is uh, choosing to pursue. Reflection on the meaning and significance of that learning. Integrating learning across contexts and a collaboration with others that can help build knowledge and skills. These skills, these skills which are called portfolio literacies, cycle through a portfolio process, and we believe they are necessary for successful portfolio use and for success in life. Now to introduce Karuta. Ian has kindly indicated that this could be considered the next generation portfolio, e-portfolio initiative. And Karuta is an Aperio incubation project. We have several goals. First, we want a portfolio process that does not require coding, something that's flexible, something that can be LTI integrated with Sakai or other LMS platforms. We want to create community around the continued use of portfolios in Sakai and other platforms. We want to explore the use of LTI, too, to provide services between Karuta and LMSs. And we're in the process of becoming a viable open source organization through the Aperio incubation process. We have four partners, HEC Montreal from Canada, IUT2 IUT Grenoble, France. Kyoto University has two graduate programs participating in Japan. And then Three Canoes LLC, a small consulting company out of the USA. We have five projects in process, two in Quebec, one in France, and two at Kyoto University in Japan. Our incubation process involves mentoring by uh, esteemed uh, members of the field who are helping guide us in how to become an open source project. We're working on our licensing, our, tr- our trademark, uh, release management processes, community development, project governance, and we're um, blessed to have resources from the Aperio Foundation to help us distribute our code, track bugs, uh, set up mailing lists, and create a website. All of this activity in relation to setting up an open source project does not guarantee quality code. This is a task for the Karuda open source community, and it means that the more folks who join in in helping us create the code, test the code, use the code, and enhance the code, the better our product can be for all. So now we're going to do an overview of the Karuta open source portfolio, and I'm going to pass the microphone to Jacques Reynaud. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm glad to join this uh, conference and talk a little bit about uh, Karuta. I hope you hear me well. Uh, So let me uh, go on. Uh, Janice, can you change the slide. Yeah, thanks. Well, as Janice said, uh, I'm going to be a little bit more like specific about the the Karuto tool. So so we're looking for something in the spirit of OSP that uh, permits the organization of different resources because uh, as you know, a portfolio is, uh, I mean, you will have all sorts of interesting element resources like text, document, uh, rubrics which are like grading elements comments and but the the nice thing about the 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 very peculiar thing about portfolio is that they they you you sort of organize these resources according to a workflow because different users are going to uh, access or uh, uh, be in the portfolio a different uh, time period like the students will upload things, uh, instructors will comment. And so the workflow is really important. And of course, the whole thing is for learning, assessment, balance, reporting, and presentation. So the one thing we learned over the last three years, and this is what I want to explain. This project is is really, is, is has been developed in partnerships. So we've been following many different schools and pilots, and we learned a great deal working with them. 
And what we learned actually is that no one portfolio is the same. And this is really key. People, different programs, different approach, different philosophy. So everyone would like to, you know, make something special, more, you know, relevant for their own, uh, their own case. So this is why we, we really, uh, uh, we really think flexibility is a key element. And moreover, uh, if you can, you should prototype also your portfolio, test it with real students to see uh, how well it does and if everyone understands what's going on. Uh, can we change? Yeah. So that, uh, as I will explain a little bit later, the Karuta is really flexible and it's it's a portfolio that is... It gives real power to the uh, teaching and learning or what we call a designer. So I'd say 95% of the portfolio can be, uh, can be developed, can be, uh, can be structured by a designer, not a developer. So this is why we, 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 we give a, a very important role to the designer. So you can, sort of iterate, to talk to faculty, change things. As I show later, it's really easy to, to, to change things. So eventually, you can come up with something that will suit the needs of the, of the, of the department or whatever, the faculty, the, the school. And then you can go and, and go on a pilot. And it, it's, again, it's really easy. Uh, Karuta is made for, it makes easy to do pilots with, let's see, uh, let's say 10 or 15 students. So you'll get lots of feedback and you will be able maybe to come back uh, and change uh, some small parts. To, uh, and eventually when you'll be satisfied, you, get, you can go on to production and, you know, for full scale with all the students involved. So this, this part, this iterative approach is really important. This is what we've done and the tool, permits that to do that very quickly and really rapidly. Okay. Uh, just to show you, uh, I, I, I will explain a little bit about the way we proceed. So you'll see uh, how you can adapt the tool to your, your needs. This is a sort of, let's say a typical page. Uh, it's not something that, I mean, not all portfolios are like that. It's just an example. But the way we, we proceed is, uh, uh, of course, the, the root is, uh, is like the portfolio and uh, the analogy is like a book. Suppose that uh, you're talking about a book. And, of course, a book is organized with different chapters. So this is what we have in the left-hand side. You, you can cre quickly uh, create chapters and this is what we call structure in our language, in Karuta. So... Uh, s s big, big, uh, big uh, chapters or correspond, as I said, to, to structure. And in this example, I have like three chapters: chapter one, two, three, or three uh, structure elements. Then, within a chapter, you can imagine pages, what we call unit. So, on the right hand side, you have page one, which is display. And it's uh, a page is really important, in Karuta. It's it's it, a page will contain all the relevant information for that sort of fit together in in, in a page. So they they will share some kind of uh, a, a meaning or or or, or relevance that are, is appropriate. They that, that tie together all these elements. I show you an example later on. So. To follow up on my explanation, within a page, you can have like sections, and I have two here, section one and section two. We call that unit structure. And finally, and this is, you find that in web pages all the time. So different sections, uh, parts of a page where you put some type of information and some other type you put other information. And finally, uh, you'll have different resources within the section. And this is pretty much the way we see things. And I guess this is pretty much the way you would want to organize a, a portfolio as well. Uh, sometimes on the left-hand side, people will put learning outcomes or it could be a task by students. And then you want to organize tasks with different 
uh, different ways. So again, you can tailor all the all the units and the structure and the sections so it will sort of fit what you really want to do. Um, can you move on? Okay, so I'm going to. I, I don't know. We didn't want to do a, a live demo because you never know what's going on with uh, all these um, with these uh, the, the tools. But I, I, I'm going to walk you through. Uh, uh, a sort of building a, a page. Uh, again, what's interesting uh, is this is a little bit frightening in some sense. Is that when you start uh, a portfolio in Caruta, you have a blank page, so you have nothing. This is an example we've done at uh, at, at the Miami meetings. So, if you want to start, you just first uh, you have this uh, created this Caruta Miami uh, uh, portfolio. But you want to, you know, you want to put structure in it. You want to put elements. So this is what I'm doing. And you just click on the, if you see the add, the add uh, button on the right hand side, you click on the, the add button and you will see uh, a sort of menu that will appear. And this menu will say, do you want to put a structure, a unit, uh, or a, a unit structure? And on the bottom, you'll see different types of resources. So let's see. Let's put a, a structure. So you just click on structure and you will have to fill, uh, you will have a, 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 a prompt that will ask you for the label of the structure. That, so that I'm going to reproduce the example we've seen before. But you can do whatever you want. You can put learning outcomes, you can put tasks, you can, you can, you can put whatever you want. So I put like uh, structure one, chapter one. So you, you click save and it, it's going to, appear on the on the left hand side in the columns over there you see that then uh i'm i'm in this uh, chapter one i want to add a unit so i click on the uh, add button and um and i click on the unit so again uh i can fill i didn't show up the the prompt but you can fill the you will be asked for the um, the labels so you put unit one and page one uh, just uh, Maybe to explain to, you'll see different uh, elements on the top right hand side of the, the screen, like the, the pencil, the, the X, the arrow. These are all the tools that can be, um, these are buttons that can be used by the designer to sort of uh, delete, uh, edit, uh, move things around within the, the sort of portfolio the designer is trying to build. So this is not something that the students will see. It's really something that only designer will see. So I'm on this uh, unit one, page one. Uh, I'm going to add a unit structure. And uh, I click on, on this and uh, the unit structure one will appear. So I could add an, another unit structure. So you'll see, so it, the key is really about having a clear mind, a clear idea of what you want to do and using the, uh, Using Kahuta, you can sort of quickly uh, build uh, what you what you're looking for. The next step now is a little bit more complex because now you want you want to be able to add uh, resources in your portfolio. So resources are you'll see them on the right hand side, just beside the uh, the red arrow. So they're called text field, field, document, URL. Calendar, image, uh, videos, comments. So these are fairly. I mean, uh, by the name of the by their names, you can see what they are for. Text field is really to put text, and it's it's really useful because sometimes in a portfolio, uh, as a designer, you want to give instructions to the student. You want to say, okay, you should. Uh, this is what is expected from you. This is. Uh, um, th these are uh, the uh, indication that you should follow that kind of stuff. Field is a uh, is, is more like a, a prompt where you ask, for example, information about give me your name, your or or you 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 want them to input information that is really specific. So you use field. Document is 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 basically where you want them to add uh, upload files. Um, all sorts of files, so the designer can sort of pre, pre, pre prepare some special uh, parts of the portfolio, so the students can download or upload. I'm sorry, files. You can have URL images. 
students can upload images as well, uh, videos. Comments is really interesting because comment is a resource where where if if you put that kind of resource in a portfolio, it will be stamped. So if someone puts a comment, there will be a date, there will be a name, uh, so everyone will know uh, the time and uh, who, who's, who's giving the comment. So this is a very specialized resource. And finally, item, get resource, and get, get resource are really specialized uh, resource that I'm not going to be able to talk too much about today. But they're really useful uh, for, for rubrics, for example. If you want to set up, um, if you want to set up a, a, a grading rubrics in a portfolio, suppose you, a student upload something and you want a tutor to evaluate this document according to a rubric. So it's really easy in Karuta to create a rubric. Uh, you just go on and, and create a separate portfolio because in Karuta portfolios are, I mean, are meant for different, uh, they can, this is the name we use for different types of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, uh, let's see, uh, environment. I mean, of course, what I'm building there is a, a sort of template for a portfolio, but you can create, let's see, a, a special portfolio, which will contain only grading elements or rubrics. So in, in Karuta, it's, it's really easy to sort of create this type of portfolio, put your rubrics there, and using get resource, access uh, the rubrics so they can be used within this portfolio that I'm presenting now. You do that using get resource. So this is really key. You don't have to, to talk to lots of people. You can create them by yourself. And then this is the end result. And, um, and again, all the, uh, the, the, the different, uh, uh, on the right hand side, you see different buttons there, the pencil, the X and everything. This is, this is only for, for, for the designer. So can you move on? Okay. This is a more, I mean, I guess you will, you will see something more. And, and for those of you who, who are, uh, who know a little bit more about portfolio. This is something that, uh, it's a sort of, uh, stylized portfolio and where you have like on the left hand side, this is what I, we've done at, uh, at the Miami uh, conference is, for example, uh, you have learning objectives on the, the left hand side, which is the unit structure. And then I put a couple units, which are the, uh, the, the actual learning objectives that are part of the, um, of the portfolio. Like we have like written communication, information literacy. Um, uh, you have uh, problem solving. I mean, you can go on with all the, the learning outcomes that uh, you, you, you want to include. So on the right hand side, what we display is the, the page, the unit for the written communication. And the way it is uh, organized, it's uh, we we follow some example in OSP, but it could be it could be different, of course. Is first there is a text resource that explain what is written communication for the students. So it, it does explain that. So it, this is a text resource that has been put for for the student. Then you will have like submit evidence, and this is the part where the students are prompt to upload a file and, and there are instructions. Uh, so you tell the students wh what to do and they can upload file there. Uh, then the, the other unit structure, it's called reflect on the evidence submitted. Again, it's for student. It's, uh, it's where you, you maybe, you, you ask the students to sort of uh, reflect on, on what is been doing. You can, put some instructions to, to advise the students what, what to do. And uh, so this is the part that, um, that the students can, where the student can reflect. And finally, there is a, an evaluation part for the tutor, for example. And it's in this part uh, that, uh, for example, this, the, the, the evaluator could, could click on a, we don't see that there, but it's, um, 
but it's uh, it's sort of hidden. There will be a pencil for the evaluator only, where you can click on the uh, on the pencil and it will uh, go and get the rubrics that are that has been assigned by the designer for this uh, for this uh, learning outcome, and you can just choose the rubric. I mean the grading element that is uh, relevant for the for the student and just save and it will show up and uh, it will show up on the on the portfolio. So that's really neat. You have a page where when I, when I mentioned before, this is sort of page where everything about written communication is there. The student can submit evidence, it can reflect, there will be the evaluation. So there's no, it's, it's really, it's really sort of uh, everything, all the information relevant to this written communication learning outcome this can be found on this on this page, but again, it's an example. You can organize things differently. It depends of the, the different case, and Karuta can support that. The one thing that is really key in Karuta that I've been not discussed so far, uh, Janice, can you move on the next page? Yeah, is that if you click to each of these resources, you will see uh, some of the elements that are displayed uh, here on this page, and Especially, uh, you'll see metadata. Uh, for each resources, you can specify the roles that that will be able to uh, interact with this resource. For example, there's a role C. So sometimes you want everyone to see uh, a, a file that has been uploaded by the student. But sometimes, maybe not. Maybe you want to reserve that for a subgroup. Maybe you want only the tutor to see uh, to see the the results, or maybe some other per person. So in Karuta, there is a very fine, there is a, a lot of flexibility about specifying different roles, and and the roles can be uh, can be set for. I mean, seeing uh, an artifact or something to delete some to edit and to also comments uh, so if you want for example the student to be able to upload files in the role edit for the document you will you will put role student and then the student will be able to see a pencil and will be able to upload files uh, if you want the tutor to be able to uh, put a, a rubric or grading element again you will put a tutor as a edit for the specific resource that is uh, that is related to the grading. So again, you have complete flexibility, you have complete control on who who can see, uh, delete, edit, and comment. So this is really powerful for that. The one thing also that is really powerful, it's uh, if we move up now. It's called a semantic tag. Whoops. Uh, can you come back, uh, Janice? I'm sorry. Semantic tag. Semantic tag is a way to sort of, uh, as the name says, if I put a special uh, tag there, a special name, uh, you will be able to retrieve this resource uh, for use in other parts of the portfolio. So, for example, if I tag... Uh, all the upload the file by students with a special name called, let's see, uh, artifact. Then in the presentation portfolio, it is easy to create a sort of special screen where the student can browse all the artifact has been, he has uploaded in, in the portfolio and select one that will be used in his presentation portfolio. So, this can be done again quite easily because you put a semantic tag on on this uh, on this uh, on, on all these artifacts that has been that have been uploaded, and because of these unique uh, semantic tags, we can search the portfolio and display them for later use in for different purposes. So it is easy to do that for, as I said. For the presentation portfolio, but it can be done also for a summary. If we, you want to create a special special page where you can maybe put all, in all the the same page all the grading results for the different learning objectives, you can do that again 
by exploiting this uh, semantic tag. If you tag all the grading rubrics uh, results, uh, then you will be able to you will be able to retrieve them and construct this uh, special page where you can display a sort of summary page where you can display everything. Okay, we can move on now. If, I don't know if there are questions. Uh, maybe uh, Janice, you want to take over now, or you want me to? Sure, Jacques. Um, some of the audience may be interested in migrating content from the open source portfolio in Sakai to Karuda. We've achieved some success in doing this, and are are uh, expecting to have a complete solution within a few months. Our current effort allows us to construct Karuda resources that act like OSP matrices and forms and then export OSP content for import into Karuda for reuse. In the future, we may be able to make Karuda look more like OSP and populate uh, accordingly with OSP content. And we may be able to replicate all current OSP functionality in Karuda. But right now we're looking for just being able to extract the data from OSP, have it show up in Karuda in something that looks like OSP, and be able to take it from there. A bit more on this. Um, here's an OSP matrix, and here's our current representation of a matrix in Karuda. It doesn't look exactly the same, but it's similar. And the analogy one might be moving from one apartment to the other where the apartments are not the same, but you will map where one item co uh, comes from in the original apartment and where it moves to in the future apartment. So here's an example of moving an evaluation out of OSP into Karuda and moving a form with attachments out of OSP into Karuda. And these attachments may be ones that were copied out of Sakai resources or uploaded directly from the user desktop. And um, our proof of concept so far um, doesn't, um, this is the inside of a form where the form has some attachments, the form has a self-assessment, the form could have an evaluation. Now let me t say a few things about the development process for Karuda. We just had a very successful development meeting in Montreal last week, and uh, we're moving ahead with uh, various additions and enhancements to Karuda. The first is email notifications. Our aim is to allow users who have in inserted some data into Karuda to be able to request feedback from other users in Karuda, perhaps their faculty or their mentors, and to do this via LTI integration that signals Sakai to send out email. Then once the feedback has been supplied, we're also working on a similar request for the the uh, provider of feedback to be able to notify users that feedback has been given. We are further customizing the look and feel of Karuda, allowing first the designer to be able to change how Karuda looks in terms of its background, its font, its uh, use of color, its use of lines. Um, and we will be doing, allowing the end user to do the same in their showcase portfolio to allow some self-expression and some uh, more uh, contemporary look and feel to Karuda. We're having great success in using semantic tags to construct customized reports. When Jacques mentioned that 95% of Karuda does not require coding, uh, the last bit that does is would be customized reports. Um, and it's not necessarily rocket science, but it does mean that each institution, each program is going to want a slightly different report. There is no one reports fit all way of doing reporting. The good news is that you can semantic you can tag semantically anything in Karuda to appear in a report. And the report then is just a gathering of the tagged items and a displaying them appropriately. It's the display part that's tricky. 
Um, we have successfully written code to integrate Karuda with Oracle. So in addition to MySQL, you can use Oracle with your Karuda database. And we are working on LTI2 integration with services to connect Karuda to the resource picker in Sakai, the assignment picker in Sakai, and eventually to Gradebook, although that uh, has some issues. Um, my my uh, assessment cap, if I put that on, I would say uh, a rating in a portfolio is not the same as a grade. So even that is a challenge in using the gradebook for assessment information in Karuda. Um, we are working directly with Sakai programmers, in particular our esteemed college colleague Chuck Severance, to um, to fill out the, the needed improvements to Sakai to allow a, res a external tool like Karuda to interact with resources and assignments and gradebook. For more information, you can contact me or contact Jacques, and we'd be happy to tell you more about our project uh, to... Um, invite you to possibly have a pilot using Karuda, or if you are very interested, we are looking for contributors, people who want to join our project and influence where Karuda will be going in the future. It doesn't mean a great deal of investment, but it means some development time, some uh, funding, some piloting with uh, funds to further enhance Karuda. All would be welcome to enhance our project. So we're going to turn it over to you to see if you have any questions. Uh, apparently, we're supposed to use the, the chat uh, to give questions. So if you have questions, please write them in the chat. I'm going to turn the mic over to Jacques to see if he has anything more to say. No, that's, uh, that's fine, Janice. Uh, you did uh, a nice job. Maybe people will want to s speak also. Uh, I guess it's possible. With these numbers, we can, we can probably go with that as long as everybody mutes when they're not speaking. Just the, the echoes come creeping back. So if you have a question, please speak up, and uh, we will take voice questions. Well, we want to thank you for your interest in Karuda today, and we welcome your questions, your concerns. We hope you'll follow our progress. Uh, we will yes. be present. We will be presenting at Aperio in June. Yes, is there a question, Ian? There's a question in the chat from uh, David Barroso, who wants to know about the best way to pilot Karuda. Is it is it a matter of installing a local instance? Um, I'll start and then Jacques may want to follow up. Uh, first of all, yes, uh, we are, we do not yet have, we're, we're working on a test server, a way that you can try it out. But the best way would be to go to GitHub, download Karuda, follow the instructions for implementing your own instance. And then uh, if you have a Sakai instance, following those instructions for LTI integration. Um, we're not yet set up as a full-fledged um, help source, but we will respond to your, your needs as we are able. So first, uh, look for us on GitHub, download the code, uh, try installing it according to the instructions, and then try the LTI integration with Sakai. Sakai 9, 2.9, or Sakai 10. I'm going to turn it over to Jock to see if he has a response. Yeah, just to, to add, uh, uh, of course, if uh, someone wants to try out uh, Karuta uh, before, uh, you know, 
installing the whole thing. Uh, we're working on on a, a test, as Janice said, as a sort of test server that will be uh, open to to people. So that's a that's a way to to do that. But but uh, I guess the best the best way is still to sort of, uh, as Janice said, to install the to go to GitHub and install the the Karuta on on your server, so you can be you you'll have much more flexibility. And this is not something very difficult. And uh, I guess uh, that that's a way to sort of be really functional. But we really uh, we're quite open to helping out uh, people, so you won't be alone for sure. And just a caution, uh, Karuta 1.0 is is available for piloting anywhere by anyone. Uh, you can anyone can get it from GitHub. But we are not recommending at this time that you go into full production with Karuta 1.0. Uh, we're building out some more features. We're doing more QA. We're finding issues. Uh, in any new software, there will be issues. And so we'd like your participation in piloting to make it better so that we can all move to production. Our, our Karuta 2.0 release is slated for May of next year, and that um, may indeed be a production ready um, application. Jacques, would you like to say something about piloting versus production? Well, um, are there any other questions? Would anyone? Okay, thank you, I'm sorry, David. I'm sorry. I, oh, I'm sorry. I, I had a problem with the. Uh, I just wanted to add that there is documentation available uh, for Karuta, and it, it, it's it's quite extensive for a designer. It's not done for for a student, of course. It's for a designer, so you you will have lots of information, so you can you can. Um, uh, that explain all the possibility and there are nice possibility for designer and once you pretty much for example uh, once you've uh, you've done a unit a page and you want to repeat this page for let's see different learning outcomes that are quite similar it's very easy to copy this page and uh, to, to replicate the page for all the different learning outcomes so it can go really fast if you sort of follow the rules that uh, and the tricks that uh, we put on the, the documentation. So Jacques, I, I believe you're talking about the work by, by Isabelle Roy. And um, if people are looking for the designer manual, would they be contract contacting you directly? Uh, yes. Uh, this is something that will eventually be part of the release but uh, we have a, a, a PDF version of, the, of this information, yeah. Are there any other questions? Hearing none, again, we thank you for your interest and we look forward to meeting up with you at the Aperio Conference in June which has been uh, now announced for Baltimore. If any of you are coming to the UnConference in perhaps February, we'd hope to meet with you there. Uh, please cheer us on. Give us whatever support you can manage, and uh, we hope to continue making progress. Jacques, would you like to say goodbye? Uh. Um, uh, thanks everyone for attending this uh, this uh, presentation, and I look forward to see you uh, very soon. Yeah, thanks everyone. Uh, this recording will be made available on the Aperio YouTube channel, so you can uh, review it at your leisure, and of course, so can others. Thanks again for attending. Goodbye. <laughs>